Let's bring back Friday Sews. Hi, my name is Sarah and my channel is Naughty Gnome Crafts. My channel is all about sewing and styling a handmade wardrobe. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these chatty videos because I only have time to film two videos a week and so I have so many different ideas for videos that I just don't really have time to do Friday Sews every week anymore. But I really wanted to sit down and just chit chat with you guys in an informal way, let you know what I've been working on, what I'm thinking about working on next, and a little bit about life. So before we get into the video, I am wearing McCall's 8067 in a linen fabric. I got this fabric from a needle sharp box. And I, if I can remember correctly, I didn't even order the pattern with that box because I didn't really like it, but I did really like the fabric. So I used this to make this um, V-neck button up shirt. It's very, very comfortable. And then on the bottom, I am wearing my Itch to Stitch Mountain View jeans. I've actually worn these more than I thought I was going to when I did my review of these jeans. Um, probably mostly because uh, most of my jeans don't fit me very well anymore. It's kind of a case where like I can get them on, but they're not comfortable. So these are relatively comfortable. So I have been wearing them more than I thought I would. And I will insert a picture of the full outfit just so you can see what it looks like on. I just wanna say if you hear any little clickety clackety sounds in the background, it's probably my dogs. My husband is out of town for the weekend. And so I have the door open so that the dogs can come in and out because they don't really like being alone and they get really sad when my husband's not here. So um, if you hear any noises, it's probably them. I will try to cut out any barking that happens because that does happen a lot. So what did I make this week? So the first thing I wanna talk about is a refashion. I made the Fiber Mood Julia dress as part of a collab with Michelle of Michelle's Us Again last year. And we used the same absolutely beautiful Dashwood Studio rayon fabric to make a garment. And I, at the time I sewed up the Julia dress, there was something about it that I didn't really like. Um, I wore that dress maybe two or three times and I, I got it back out to wear it um, this past week. And when I put it on, it didn't fit me anymore because the elastic waist was too tight. So I thought to myself, okay, I've never really been happy with this dress. Now I can't wear it anymore because it's too uncomfortable. So let's do something about it. So I went ahead and took the dress apart and actually, first I have a question for you guys. So the elastic waist was too tight, so I needed it to be longer. And normally any other time, I would just throw away the elastic and then put in a new longer piece of elastic. But this time, because I'd only worn the dress like literally less than a handful of times, it was basically brand new elastic and I felt like it was wasteful to just toss it. So I went ahead and just patched in another piece of elastic to make it a little bit longer. It actually only ended up needing to be about an inch or so longer. So I zigzagged a little short piece of elastic to the original to make it longer, but I don't know if that's actually a bad idea, if that's like a weak spot in the elastic or if it's just totally normal and I'm being crazy. Let me know what you guys do if you ever need to go back and change the elastic length in your pants or shorts or bottoms or whatever, because I just am not really sure if that was a good thing to do or not, but that's what I ended up doing. So for the skirt part, it was pretty simple. Um, like I said, I just made the elastic a little bit longer and put that back in. And then I decided that the original length of the dress, it was a midi length. It was kind of a weird in-between length of being just below the knee and ankle length. And I just never really liked the way that that looked. So I went ahead and shortened the skirt by about three inches and I took it off of the top because I needed to, like the bodice and the skirt were separated already. And the bottom of the skirt like originally had these side slits on both sides. And I didn't really want to mess with that. So I just shortened it from the top. So of course, when you do that, it moves the slits up higher. So the slits are fairly high. They're like mid thigh on me. And I'm concerned that that's maybe a little too short, but I really didn't want to mess with it because um, I had like bar tacked the, uh, the side slits. And this fabric is so fragile that I just, I want to unpick things as little as possible in order to avoid snagging or fraying or any of that kind of thing. So I went ahead and just left it. The side slits are really high now. I, I probably wouldn't wear this to the office, but I think for casual wear, it's perfectly fine. So the skirt was a fairly easy fix. Um, I just put the elastic back in and I this time around, I top stitched down the um, elastic so that it won't shift. And now I have a perfectly wearable skirt. 
So the top portion ended up being more challenging. So the first thing that I did was I just surged the bottom of the bodice, uh, turned it up five eighths of an inch and stitched it down and put in a simple hem. And then I decided that another part about the original dress that I wasn't in love with was the sleeve length. It just seemed like they were a little bit too voluminous, too long. Something about it just seemed a little bit bulky. So I went ahead and I cut two inches of length off of the sleeves and then I hemmed them. And I like that better. I think that I could have gone even maybe a little bit shorter, but I definitely think that the new version is an improvement over the old one. So I thought I was done with the top and I washed these pieces and hung them up to dry. And when I pulled them out of the wash, um, the neckline, a little piece of the neckline had frayed and like come apart from the binding and there was a little hole in my neckline after I'd washed it. I swear you guys this fabric is cursed like I love this fabric and I'm glad that I took the time to like fix it and make it wearable but I swear to you like if I have to do one more thing to this like I'm just not doing it anymore this is the last straw so I waited for it to dry of course and then I was like I got to do something about this neckline so I unpicked the bias binding from the neckline um, and so the whole thing I mean I had that one hole but the whole thing was really quite frayed and because the, the original instructions have you put the binding on and then they want you to trim it like really close to the seam allowance. This fabric is just too fragile to do that. So that was a mistake. Um, I should not have trimmed it. So the whole thing was like very, very frayed. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, what can I do to fix this? Because I'm going to have to make the neckline lower because I, I need to like sew it below that frayed part. Otherwise it's just going to come right apart again. But the neckline was already kind of a wide boat neck and I was worried that it was going to look weird. Like it was going to be too wide. It was going to start falling off my shoulders. So I decided to re-stitch the pleat. There is a pleat in the back of the top. And so I just went ahead and brought in that pleat uh, and made it deeper. So that, that actually brings the neckline in closer to the shoulders. And then I used a quilting cotton, a much more sturdy fabric for the binding. I did a wider binding than the original called for. I think it was like only like a quarter inch binding. I made it wider in order to have that extra bit of security, a little bit more fabric to prevent it from fraying. And like I said, this is it. If this, if this comes apart or if it frays or something, like I'm done with it, I'm not doing anything else. Um, but I think that I did manage to save it the top now the neckline actually sits a little bit strangely on my shoulders um but again i'm just gonna live with it it's fine so i do have a clip of me wearing the outfit um, unfortunately that clip is from before i had to redo the neckline so it's not exactly the same as this but it's close enough you'll get an idea of what it looks like i actually really like the set as a two-piece now i'm really excited to wear them as separates i think that both pieces will go with a lot of the basic neutral tops or bottoms that i have in my wardrobe and i just think that i'm going to get so much more wear out of it now as a set than i ever did as a dress so i am so glad that i took the time to go ahead and refashion this into something that i will actually wear even if it was a bit of a headache. I have one other finished item to talk to you about this week and that is New Look 6644. These are my linen joggers that I talked about making in my filling the gaps in my wardrobe video and I honestly have no idea why I waited so long to make these pants because I love them. Oh my goodness. I think I told you guys in my previous makes video that my um Tula pants, the, the natural linen tulip pants were my new favorite pants. Well, I think they've already been supplanted and these are my new favorite pants. So this pattern is actually, it's pretty complex. There's a lot of elements to this pattern and I ended up simplifying some things which I will go ahead and talk to you about, but it is a jogger style pattern. It's meant to sit one inch below the natural waist. It has an elastic waist. You have the option to do elasticated cuffs, which is what I did, or you can do like these, um, like turn up cuffs with a little button tab. Um, I think that's really cute. I don't know that I'd ever actually make that option, but it is, it's a nice feature. It has cargo pockets. You have the option to have just one or you can have it on both sides. Um, there's a lot of pocket flaps. There's just a lot going on with these pants. So the fabric that I used is a washed linen that I got from Stylemaker Fabrics. It's been in my stash for quite a while in this olive green color. And I absolutely love this color. Um, it's a neutral in my wardrobe. I can wear it with so many different things. 
So for sizing, I chose the size eight, even though my measurements would put me in the size 10, I looked at the finished garment measurements and I decided how much ease I wanted through the hip, that the eight was more appropriate. So I went with that size. I had to shorten the legs seven inches, but I am four foot nine, so that is a normal kind of adjustment for me. I used my L-shaped ruler in order to determine how much I needed to adjust both the rise and the um, crotch extension. So for the rise, I found that I did need to shorten it a little bit in both the front and the back, but not in equal amounts. I'm finding that that's very common. I think normally I need to shorten more in the back than I do in the front, at least for big four patterns. And then the same for the crotch extension. I always have to add more to the extension to where the crotch goes out so that it has enough room to cover my thighs. I always have to do it a little bit in the front and usually a lot in the back and I found that that was the case for this as well. And then finally I did make some design changes. So the original pattern wants you to put like some sort of trim on the front pockets. These are actually just um, side seam pockets but they're a little bit different. They have you do some top stitching and then they want a little trim here. I omitted the trim because I just didn't think it was necessary. They There's back pockets and then they want you to put back pocket flaps on and again I omitted those because I just felt like it wasn't necessary. I just did the simple patch pockets on the back. I chose to do only one cargo pocket on the side instead of two and they have this whole like I don't know, complicated situation where there's like twill tape and then there's a button and there's just to be like this little loop with the twill tape. I just simply inserted a snap because that was simpler to me. It is a functional snap, but I'm always gonna leave it buttoned so like it doesn't technically need to be functional, but it is. Um, but one thing I did do was I forgot to interface um, on the inside of the flap before I stitched it closed. So I had to put my interfacing um, like on the bottom of the flap so it's visible. But like I said, I'm never actually gonna use this pocket for anything so you won't see it. Um, but I did make that mistake. And then the finally what I had some issues with was with the elastic. So I did not have the width of elastic that I needed for the, um, for the waistline. The pattern wants you to do this thing where you make really narrow channels and you're feeding multiple pieces of elastic, of 3 8 inch elastic through those channels. I hate doing that. I never get it to work. Um, I absolutely hate it. So I don't like doing that. So instead I used just one wider piece of elastic and had like a normal casing. But like I said, I didn't have the width of elastic that I actually needed. I think that the width of this casing is uh, one and a half inches and I only had one and a quarter inch elastic. So what I did to get around that is I, um, I just stitched down a little channel. So technically it has kind of like a little ruffle, like a paper bag thing at the top, but I don't think it's super noticeable. And I just, I'm glad that I used supplies that I had on hand rather than having to order something else. So I think that worked out just fine. And the one and a quarter inch elastic was actually perfect for the cuffs. So I didn't have to worry about doing the channel thing at the bottom. This one fit just fine. And then the last thing that I did was I did do grommets and then I just did a fake drawstring. I think I've mentioned this before with other pants, but I don't see the point of having a drawstring that goes all the way around um, the pants in an elastic waist because it's not functional, like you don't need it for anything. So I just made um, a short piece of twill tape, threaded it through these grommets and just tied it in a bow. So it's just a fake drawstring, but you still have the design element without wasting still all that twill tape. So these are actually still damp. I just pulled them out of the wash last night. So I don't have any modeled shots for you right now, but I really love these pants. They're so comfortable. I think that they're gonna get so much wear. They'll be perfect for summer. I think I'll actually end up wearing them three seasons out of the year. I think in the winter, they're gonna be too um, thin uh, to wear in the winter time, but otherwise I will wear them the rest of the season. I love these pants. I'm so glad that I took the time to make them and I'm gonna see how much I wear them and if there's any adjustments that I feel like I need to make, but I would seriously consider making another pair of these because I just love them that much. Now let's talk about what I am working on right now. So after I finished these pants, I decided to make one more pair of pants. In my plans video, I had talked about making the uh, paper cut patterns geese pants that have the pleated front and the elastic in the back. I decided to shelve those for now. I do still wanna make those pants eventually. One of the things that I realized is that because I'm only going into the office two days a week, I think I've decided that it makes more sense to wear dresses when I go to the office. So I don't really need a more formal, like professional looking pair of pants right now. 
I still like the style and I do want to make those at some point, but for now, it makes more sense for me to sew casual pants that I can just sew and wear around the house. So I substituted that pattern for the Style Arc Berry Pants. I bought this pattern in one of their sales last year and I just hadn't gotten around to it yet, but I'm really intrigued by the shape of the berries. I did make a pair of Fiber Mood Betty trousers, which has that similar barrel leg, and I was surprised by how much I really liked that style. So I wanted to do something even simpler and comfortable for summer. So I'm making the berry pants in a size six with my everyday linen that I got from Blackberry Fabrics. I showed this in my haul. It's just a simple, um, relative, it's very similar to this actually, but it's a black linen. And I have that cut out. I don't have anything to show you because I haven't started sewing it yet. I just have the pieces cut out and I'm hoping to get that sewn up within the next couple of days. The other thing that I would like to work on this next week is something that is truly a need in my closet. So I am very much a jean shorts kind of person in the summer. I love wearing jean shorts. I just tried on the one pair of jean shorts that I still had in my closet and they don't fit me anymore. So actually, luckily I was digging through some things in storage and I came across a pair of jean shorts that I had put away because at that point they had gotten too big for me. And so I tried them on and they do actually fit. So I do have one pair of jean shorts that I can wear right now. The problem with those shorts is that they are um, pretty old. They're, I think they're like maybe six or seven years old and they have a lower rise. So they're not like super low, but I'd say they're on the lower side of mid rise. And that's just not my favorite um, for my comfort level. I prefer a higher rise. So I can wear those right now, but they're not ideal. And I really just want a pair, at least one pair of jean shorts in my wardrobe that I can wear. I decided to go with the Megan Nielsen Dawn shorts because I already have the pattern and many, many people have made this pattern successfully. I thought I would give it a try for myself. So I went to Joann Fabrics and I picked up one yard of 12 ounce non-stretch denim. Now I have a lot of denim in my stash, but it's all nicer denims. It's things like Mind the Maker denim or Cone Mills denim that I can't get anymore. And I, I know that this is silly because at some point I need to just sew those things up, but I keep wanting to use a less expensive denim to try out a pattern because I just don't want to waste my really nice denim on something that might not even work. So I went ahead and went to Joann's and it, they had a sale. So I got this one yard of uh, 12 ounce denim for, I think it was like $12. So I wanted, um, I just bought one yard. So I just want to try it out first and, you know, tweak the pattern however I need to tweak it before I cut into my nicer denim. That's not crazy, right? I mean, I know it's silly and I should use what I have, but I don't think it's crazy to not want to use $30 a yard denim on something when I've never tried the pattern before. Anyway, it's this sort of mid-wash um, blue color. And it feels, it actually feels really nice. It is 100% cotton, so there's no um, stretch, there's no polyester in it. And I think it'll be make a really nice pair of jean shorts. So with any luck, I will at least get that started this week. I think ideally, if I, it does work out, I would like to make um, this pair and then maybe one other pair for the summertime, either in a black denim or a white denim. I think that having two pairs of jean shorts would be um, really nice to add to my collection because I don't have a lot of shorts. Um, the other shorts that I have that I can wear right now are, I have some linen, like natural colored linen shorts that are great. And then I have a couple pairs of rayon uh, pattern shorts, which are nice, but like not as necessary. Like I should have concentrated more on like the staple sort of shorts, but that's what this is for. And I'm really hoping that it, wor it will work out and I'll certainly report back in my monthly makes video. So the last thing that I have to share with you that is a work in progress is actually a knitting project. So I've been obsessed with making knitted tank tops and I was digging through my stash trying to find some yarn to make another one. And I happened upon some Lindy chain, which is from Knit Picks. It's a cotton linen yarn. Um, I thought I didn't have any summer weight yarns in my stash, but it turns out I lied because I found some. So I decided to go ahead and use it to make the Cumulus Tank by Petite Knit. This is, it could not be any simpler. It's, this is like a very basic um, stockinette uh, camisole. And I already did the hard part. Like I knit the little triangles individually and then you join them all together and you're just knitting in the round. You're supposed to just knit a tube for the body without any shaping, but because I'm me and I can't 
leave things well enough alone. I am adding some uh, dart shaping in the back just to bring it in a little bit at the waist. And um, also because I'm me, I was thinking about possibly doing like a lace edge instead of a hemmed stockinette edge just to like add a little bit of interest so it's not quite as boring. I am really enjoying this. The yarn is kind of hard on my hands. I can't work on this too much, um, but I am enjoying it at when I do get to work on it. And I really like the color. I like this natural color, and I think that it will go with quite a few things in my wardrobe. So I'm really enjoying the process of doing that. Oh, and the needles that I'm using are my Haya Haya Bamboo Interchangeables, and these are size two, which I think is 2.75 millimeter. Oh, and here's what the yarn looks like in the ball. So let's talk a little bit about life. So as I said in the beginning of the video, my husband is out of town this weekend. He went to go help his uncle. Um, I think his, his uncle has had some health issues. So he just went um, with some other family members to his uncle's home in order to kind of do some work for like getting his house prepped for like summery housework kind of stuff, um, home repair kind of stuff. So he is gone. And so it's just me and the girls right now. And it is, it's just so funny how different the dogs are when my husband's not at home. They just get, I mean, I honestly, I think Penny gets kind of depressed. And like, she spent most of last night uh, downstairs. She normally sleeps in my bedroom with me and my husband. But most of the night, she, she was downstairs sleeping on the couch because I think she was waiting for him to come home, which was so sweet and kind of sad. Um, I had to, it was like two in the morning and I woke up and she wasn't there. And so I had to like go down and get her so that she would come up and sleep on the bed with me just so that she would know that she's not alone. Penny is more of my husband's dog and Daisy's my dog. Like each human has a dog and the dog needs the human. So Penny's the one who's really sad, but of course they're both sad. But yeah, that's what's going on here this weekend. So yeah, there's not really a lot going on here besides that. But that's what I wanted to share with you today. And please let me know in the comments if you like these chatty videos. I was thinking about possibly trying to bring back Friday Sews and maybe do it like once a month. I think that I could fit that into my schedule. Um, but I do like chatting with you guys in a more informal way. So if you enjoy it too, I would really appreciate hearing from you. I'm going to go ahead and link my Friday Sews playlist in case you want to check out any of my other videos. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the like button because it helps more people find my channel. I'll see you again next time.